Hey guys, what's up? In today's video, I have a super awesome CPU liquid cooler to show you guys. Yeah, I know it's hard to make a CPU cooler interesting, but trust me, this is freaking cool. So this AIO liquid cooler, it is an all-in-one liquid cooling unit, is so unique that it is literally one of a kind. There was only one ever made with these exact measurements, with this exact style for me. And I'm so happy. I'm just gonna get right into it and show you guys this awesome cooler. And it's right here. This is it. Okay, I'm just playing. This is it. Yes. This is an Asetek liquid cooler with quick disconnects. I am so happy to have this. This, oh. Uh, I have a build planned with this that I don't want to spoil too much of, but let's just say it's going to be pretty sick. So, to be honest, I actually haven't tested it yet, which is actually what we're going to be doing in this video. I have a fun little build to do with this cooler, but let's just talk about it for a sec. So, I believe this is a Gen 6 Asetek pump with, I believe, two foot total of tube length, although I'm not sure. I believe that was around the measurement we have. Um, this is also an RGB actual pump block. Oh, it's RGB one of these daisy chainable uh, five volt RGB headers. Then it's just got a standard three pin pump header for power. And then we have our radiator. So this is just a pretty simple thin 120 millimeter radiator. Nothing really too special about it. But the amazing part of this cooler, the reason I'm so excited because it's so specific for a build that I'm doing is that these quick disconnects can basically be used to connect these at any point meaning that theoretically you could weave the tubing around a build and then connect it at a weird part of the case instead of just having to be basically stuck in a certain, you know, configuration where the pump and radiator have to be pretty close to each other, mounted next to each other. This allows for some pretty awesome stuff. But besides that, let's actually get into testing this cool because I have not tested it yet and I'm not entirely sure how it actually works. All right, so for our little test build today, we have this. I haven't shown this on my channel yet, and I've been avoiding it because it's so cool, and I want to save it for like a weird video like this. Just to show it, I will be using this in a build in the future, but this is an Azeroth Rack ITX LGA 2011-3 server board with quad channel SODIM memory slots. Very similar to the LGA 2066 board I've showed off before, the ASRock X299 EITX. But this board is really special. I mean, of course it's a server board, so it's not, you know, amazing. No RGB headers, which sucks, but everything. But this thing is sick. I have installed a Xeon E5 2695V3, which is a 14 core, 28 thread CPU in this thing that actually uses a lot of heat. It's got like a 140 watt TDP, so definitely this cooler will have its work cut out for it. We have 64 gigabytes of DDR4 2066 SODIM memory. And just like that, we have our 64 gigs of memory in there. In an ITX board, 64 gigs is freaking awesome. So one annoyance with this motherboard is it actually uses the narrow ILM cooler mounting for LGA 2011-3, which basically means I just needed a special mounting kit, which I just purchased from uh, Ace Attack on Amazon really quickly. It was like 10 bucks. I'm just going to install that really easily. Ace Attack has a really awesome mounting system. Just like that, I've installed my mounting hardware. I need some thermal paste. Arctic MX4, you know it. Grain of rice rule goes out the window. We go with just the paint on the CPU. Perfection, and we're just going to mount our pump block. I did it the right way for once, which is amazing. All right, that's installed. That's really nice. That is so nice to be able to, you know, it's always a choice between installing the cooler first when it's a liquid cooler, and then you have to do a weird maneuver to mount the radiator in the case when you install the motherboard, or to install the radiator in the case first, and then do a weird maneuver to install the pump. But this time I just get to install them separately and then connect them, which is freaking awesome. All coolers should be like this. For our power supply, we're just gonna grab something simple like this 1U EVGA power supply, 500 watts, 80 plus gold. Yeah, I know, right? EVGA makes a 1U PSU, fun. So we're gonna be using that just because, hey, we're going for a server-esque build. Might as well use server-esque parts. And also while we're at it, here's our graphics card. It's just sitting in front. We have a GTX 1050 Ti, something I don't feel like plugging in power cables. So we're just gonna use that. Bring this over here and install that like so. There we go. 
And of course we have our 20 plus four pins, eight pin and 24 pin, perfect. I hope this power supply doesn't blow up. The motherboard itself has onboard graphics and they're so bad, they have 16 megabytes of VRAM. I want to see if I can get it to boot to the actual discrete graphics card we have today. This is the jankest setup I've had in a while. And for our boot drive, we're just going to go with this regular old Samsung 860 Cubo, one terabyte SSD that I've got all my windows and everything installed on. Now let's connect these. These might be in the wrong order, kind of. I don't know. I feel like these are supposed to be on the pump and these are supposed to be on the radio, but I don't think it actually matters. See, like these are color coded red and blue, but these are both red. So I have no idea. But hey, that's fine. All right, so you just have to push and twist. And yeah, there we go. That is locked, I hope. And just like that, that should be installed. Oh, we need a fan for a radiator. I just have this Corsair white fan with a grill because I've cut too many fingers just sticking my fingers in that by accident. So, oh God. There we go. We have a nice little fan setup here that should be plenty. Again, to cool this thing, it's, it's not too hard. And like I've cooled it with much smaller radiators, so it should be fine. All right, the moment of truth. Now, it should actually just turn on right away as soon as I turn on this power supply because the way these server boards work is, although it does have a front panel header, it just turns on the second you turn on the power supply the first time, and then if you shut down, you can use the front panel. But this should turn on right away. My cooler should be ready. I am ready with the off switch because I'm going to unplug this thing immediately if I see any liquid coming out. A little bit scared. Liquid is flowing, I think. Okay, we are booted. Of course, it's on integrated graphics again. So we'll head into our BIOS. I think we're moving liquid into the radiator. I'm a little worried, but I feel like it would have blown up by now if if, if we weren't. The radiator looks kind of cool. This is a very long cooler and I'm super excited to use it. Yes. Oh, it's, it's coming through the graphics card. Thank God. <laughs> Windows update. Now is not the time. Oh no. I don't think I have Afterburn on here. See that I've got all my windows and everything installed on. All right, let's get some internet in here. Ah, oh, that's, that's terrible. It's fine. It's fine. It's the jank setup day. All right, there we go. Much better performance wise. We have everything installed. Xeon E5 2695 V3 and we are actually boosting to the proper boost clock. God, I love seeing that 14 cores, 28 threads. Let's see um, logical process. Ah, I love it. I just, I love this. Oh, okay. Well, I definitely know our cooler's working because I can actually feel the radiator heating up. This fan isn't the greatest for pressure because it's really not blowing too well through the cooler, but It'll definitely get the job done. This CPU is known to heat up radiators and then pretty much maintain a really decent temp around 50 degrees under load, which is pretty insane for a 14 core on a single. It was actually on a 92 millimeter, so this is even better. All right, GPU temp 25 degrees, that's expected. It's not doing anything. Our CPU temperature right now is 42 degrees at idle, which isn't amazing, but given that this fan sucks and it's only a 120 millimeter radiator on a 14 core Xeon, that's pretty good and it actually shouldn't get too high. So it works. I'm very happy about that. I was kind of worried that I would mess up and just end up turning it on without fully connecting these and you can see where that becomes a problem. My only problem with this cooler is that when you do disconnect the quick disconnects, you may lose a drop or two of some of the coolant. But the thing about these is technically I could refill them. I just have to figure out what AC Tech actually uses, or I could probably just put some distilled water in there and call it a day. But again, I don't think that'll be a problem for a long time. There's plenty of liquid in here. And uh, oh man, I'm very happy that this actually works. Hey, and uh, and uh, I have a little gaming PC set up here right now. I can play some games, but that's besides the point. So. This is my awesome little radiator. And again, thank you again so much to Asatech and Asatech Dennis, who actually himself built and sent this to me. So thank you so much. You guys freaking rock. If you don't know who Asatech is, they're basically one of the leaders in AIO liquid cooling. They manufacture a ton, about, I'd say even at least 50% of the market is Asatech designed pumps. They do design and manufacture most of these pumps which are freaking awesome and efficient so i'm super excited to have this and thank you guys again so much for sending it thank you guys so much for watching i hope you guys kind of enjoyed this little test video and you know i kind of just want an excuse to build a really stupid test bench and use a bunch of parts i haven't used in a while so i got a 1050 ti here that i'm actually giving away fun fact uh, more on that in my giveaway video um i got this motherboard that i'm super excited to use and this stupid one u power supply but it's not a match because server server so thank you so much for watching hope you guys kind of enjoyed i love you guys let me shut this down and i will see you guys in the next one peace